Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath, and a happy new year. Pearl said to me this morning, I haven't seen you for ages. Well, since last year. <laughs> Took me a while to get that one. So let's begin uh, today with this is my father's world verses one and three number 92 92 this is my father's world and it is isn't it it's his world your best to the master 572 verses 1 and 3 give off your best to the master verse 1 and 3 
And the final one, and I think Chester is going to put the words up. There it is. Does anybody know Gentle Shepherd? Do you all know Gentle Shepherd? It's a beautiful, beautiful song. So, let us sing. Feel the heart. Let's feel the spirit in this one. Good morning. Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year. I am one of the fortunate, I get to be one of the people that opens the year on the first Sabbath of the year. And I just want to say welcome to all of the visitors who are here. Do we have any visitors? Can we have a show of hands? That's all. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to call you out. You're not going to have to say anything. I just, we just want to recognize you and, and ask you to come back again. So our next, I believe Chester has our mission spotlight. I have eight sons who would soon have to enlist in the army and face serious Sabbath challenges. To protect my sons, I moved here as a literature evangelist. Forty years ago, Juan Amigo was sent to Andorra to work as a coal porter and to plant the first Adventist congregation in the nation. Andorra is a speck on the map, sandwiched between France and Spain. It lies in the valleys of a mountainous region where millions of tourists come for exciting sports activities every year. This country was one of the last unentered territories of the inter-European division. At that time, Juan and his family were the only Adventists in the country. Today, five of his sons remain in Andorra and have leadership roles in the only Adventist congregation there. Our church is a 
bit different than other countries. Actually, in Andorra, there's no church registration, so we cannot exist as a church. So we created ourselves as an association, and this is the way that we can operate in this country. We are a small group. We have 25 members, of whom 14 are children. For several years, we did many evangelistic campaigns without many results. We decided to stop to pray until God showed us where we should focus our efforts. Now, we are focusing our efforts on our children and our children's friends and our friends too. Putting kids first has reshaped the style and flow of this church's worship. On Friday evenings, adult members meet at the church for Vespers and study the Sabbath school quarterly lesson ahead of schedule. This allows extra time for the kids during regular Sabbath morning activities. The study is a great way to enter the Sabbath day. You know, in church, we're not used to put kids first. Um, we don't give them a place in, in front in the stage, for example, uh, many times, maybe only once a trimester. So we started focusing uh, to do activities as a pie finders uh, for, our church, for our kids. Uh, that's actually what every church does. But we also created a space Saturday morning for them where they have kind of a sermon for kids, they have some activity for kids and also for the grown-ups. So we can interact them and us and we can learn from the kids and the kids can learn from us. This week's teacher presents a message from the Bible. She brings visual illustrations and a kid-friendly sermon that is also enjoyable for adults. Afterward, the children break into classes to study their quarterly lesson. Then the adults enjoy a special message in the main hall. Once a month, a delicious potluck is served with a lot of international dishes and flavors. This is a great opportunity to grow relationships and nourish the body. The children of this church are catered to in a special way. They are put first because this group wants them to take leadership and ownership of church life. They are the future of this congregation. And through them, friends and parents are invited to many fun activities. Please pray for Adventist children around the world who will lead God's church in the coming days. And thank you for your support of the mission offering, which helped start this church. So this morning, I was anticipating some special, special music from some special guests to me. I'm not going to reveal their identity at this point because I, I had to take a rain check. They weren't able to make it for me. But I promise you, if you are here the first Sabbath of February, they will be here. And we will all get to enjoy it together. If you were to write the dates for somebody who deceased, who died, who passed away, how would you write it? How would you literally write it? I almost want to get somebody to do it on a piece of paper, just so I can do a little demonstration, just a little one. How would you write it? Thank you for that. She actually highlighted everything I needed. Now, let me ask you, Faye, what part of that display is the most important part? What you're doing in the middle. The dash. The dash. I was inspired about that. The dash. 
That is the very thing that is most significant. Not the numbers, though we, we celebrate the numbers. We, we have birthday celebrations that commemorate the birth of someone every year. And sometimes we remember their passing or we celebrate their life, so we say, as they, as they passed. And we, we don't forget there's commemorative times but we don't seem to put a lot of focus on the dash or what happens in between. So I bring good, uh, uh, good news from, from our, our highest leader, from the highest point, and I'm gonna read to you. It says, welcome aboard flight 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Emmanuel. Thank you for choosing Salvation Airline. And I assure you that comfort is bestowed in John 3.16 and John 10. Flight 2020 will be taking off from January Airport to December Airport with an ultimate destination for heaven. Please be reminded that during our flight, we will stop at 12 interesting sites, taking a total of 365 amazing days. We will be cruising at countless blessings per day. A million miles above earthly levels. The weather at times may be cloudy, but my grace is sufficient. There may be some turbulence, but divine intervention is certain. The Prince of Peace will say, peace be still to our storms, and they will obey. The heavenly angels will be our flight attendants and they will supply our, our, all of our needs according to his great riches and glory. You shall not want. Our menu includes peace, grace, mercy, favor, sound health, success, and prosperity. Amazingly, they are all free, courtesy of our pilot, Captain Emmanuel. Please fasten your prayer your prayer belt, so that you and all of your family members could arrive safely. For further questions about our journey or flight safety, please consult our flight, your safety manual, the Bible, on a daily basis. In Jesus' name, there will be no flight losses. Please advertise this exciting flight to all you know. When I was a, uh, a little boy, I used to be fascinated with strength. And sometimes that meant superheroes. So Superman had incredible strength, laser vision, uh, Speedy Gonzalez, super fast. My question this morning, in accordance with my theme, which has been the work that we have to do in our presentation for our community. We face forces that we are no match for. Has God given us anything to deal with these forces? And if so, what? What is our superpower? The Holy Spirit. Prayer. The armor, the armor. Sorry? Belief, beautiful. The health message. Love. Faith. Faith. 
the lamp and the light, the truth. All wonderful weapon, all weapon, wonderful weaponry, and yet not quite the answer that I'm looking for. Let me, let me see if I can give you some clues. I was there the moment David hurled himself at the invincible giant. And when three Hebrew boys stood before a bowing nation. I was there for Gideon and all of his men before a war that to this very day they still talk about in wonder. I was there during Naaman's demise. I was present for Joseph's confrontation with Potiphar's wife. And I had a part to play in the wilderness when our master and savior went head to head with the same de deceiver who disrupted our very first parents. I saw the war in heaven, and I see you as I go about your daily tasks, vacillating from one scenario to the next. I am the greatest gift that our creator has ever issued. And a reason all can be judged on that heralded judgment day. I have everything to do with discrimination and yet I discriminate against no one and I am an unalienable part of the family of God. I am a weapon like any other and can be your greatest triumph or your greatest demise. Who am I? The Holy Spirit. I had to qualify, I had to say, I knew when I posed this question that I was gonna get some amazing answers that I cannot disqualify. They all are relevant and pertinent, and yet it's not the answer that I'm looking for. This one thing is the precursor for, this is the reason why anything happens. Our Father's love. Our Father's love. That actually is the precursor for everything. <laughs> So you beat me to the punch on that one. It comes after that. Choice. Choice. Without choice, we don't have love. Without choice, we don't have heaven. Choice is the one thing that cannot be taken from us no matter how no matter what we face, no matter how big the giant, no matter how many are bowing, no matter what the temptation is that's in front of you, we all have this unalienable factor that God has given to us called choice. We have to choose Jesus. We have to choose salvation. We have to choose heaven. We get to choose worship on Sabbath. Choice. As we separate for our classes today, I really want us to ponder the seriousness, the simplicity, and the complexity of what God has given to each and every one of us in our ability to choose. None of us will stand on Judgment Day with an excuse for why we didn't choose. He asks us to do, but he's the one that empowers us to do. He doesn't empower us unless we choose. So let's keep that in mind. Um, we're going to separate for our classes today. And thank you for your participation. <laughs>